So, um, hello. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, uh, welcome all of you. Okay. So, let me first introduce myself first. So, uh, my, my family is Chua. So, my name, my given name is Ming Yang. However, uh, you can just call me Chua. So, I'm a I'm currently a senior lecturer in Faculty of Engineering and Technology Multimedia University. So I am the moderator for today's webinar. So on behalf of the organizer, I would like to welcome all of you to our sixth Humanizing Innovation at MMU webinar series. Thanks to all of you for sparing us your precious time to be with us now. So without wasting uh, any more of the time because we have quite limited amount of time, so let us begin. So uh, as an opening for this webinar, so uh, in, that in December 2019, the world was shocked with a pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China. Scientists later confirmed that the root cause of this outbreak is actually due to an unknown airborne transmitted virus that we call it uh, scientifically, we call it as SARS-CoV-2, or in a more common terms, we all know it, which is we call it as a coronavirus. Okay, so the virus spread so fast to most part of the world. It originates from Wuhan, China, and now it's almost everywhere in just a few months of time, more than six to eight months of time. So it has now turned into a global pandemic and uh, the country borders were closed and uh, this status has to remain like that for months and even until, till, until now in most of the world in the country. So here in Malaysia, we had our we had our first MCO on 18 March 2020, when everyone was not ready for such a drastic change in our living style. Suddenly, offices, schools were closed, cinemas and shopping malls were closed. So remote working or a more common terms we call it as a work from home and remote education or somebody called it as an online learning, online teaching has become our new norm. So to get us things that we need uh, for our daily lives, for our works, we actually shop online, something that uh, most of the people never do this uh, when there's no this COVID-19 pandemic. So we buy food through food delivery. So we don't go out, we call food delivery. So all the frontliner actually help us to, to, to get us all the necessities that uh, we are looking for. So everyone struggled very, very hard to adapt to this new norm and not only on our side but we also have a bigger problem so uh, some people they lose their jobs stock markets they're not doing very very well and uh, the world economy will eventually highly affected so after going through a cycle of this mco some terms that i think most of the people uh, we are quite familiar with mco pkp or pkpb cmco EMCO, Enhanced MCO, RMCO, Recovery MCO, we're now switch back to another round of CMCO again due to the third wave of COVID-19. So uh, we we actually will lose, loosen the beat uh, when we are under this RMCO. We can actually go to shopping malls, go to visit some of the tourist spot again. But right now, uh, <clears throat> Because of this third wave of COVID-19 again, we have to switch to the same mode of living and working that we actually has gone through uh, in probably uh, uh, four or uh, six months ago. Okay, So uh, we now have to eventually switch back to the same mode of living and working. So uh, the, the same challenges are still here and it might be even more. Okay, And uh, in order for us to recover back our economy, to restore our country's economy, back to the state that we have earlier this year, it is now even a more challenging task for all of us, okay? So to help our country to bring our economy back into the momentum, we strongly believe that there are some, a lot of things that MNC and SME can do. One of the important things is uh, we can make use of technologies to help our country's economy to achieve a faster recovery rate and to better adapt ourselves to the new norm in our daily life, okay? So uh, all these things eventually it bring us to the topic for today, which is accelerating post-COVID-19 economic recovery through sustainable 5G and industry revolution 4.0. Uh, 
So for today's topic, we have invited three experts from different sectors, the telecommunication sector, the manufacturing sector, and the higher education sector. So from the telecommunication sector, we have Dr. Tiong Ka Seng from SECTE in Malaysia. So Dr. Tiong will share on the topic regarding the connectivity requirements for the IR 4.0. He will further elaborate on the role of 5G as a game-changing technology, which is designed to accommodate emerging challenges of IR 4.0. He will also share on a few key industrial applications of 5G too. So from the manufacturing factor, we have Ms. Lu Guan Ki from Infineon Technologies Malaysia, who will talk about uh, the uh, implementation of IR 4.0 in Infineon Malacca. And from the higher education sector, we have Dr. Lim Hang Xiong from Multimedia UNC. Dr. Lim will share on the several aspects, the needs of uh, first, the needs of upskilling, uh, upskilling and reskilling in higher education, given the ongoing COVID nineteen situation, and then he will share with all of you uh, all of the research activities and the programs under CSCI, one of the research center uh, in Faculty of Engineering and Technology in MMU, which includes the MMU Infineon and MMU ZTE collaboration. So, without further ado. Uh, let me introduce our first speakers for today's webinar, Dr. Tiong Ka Sen. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Dr. Tiong is currently the Vice President of Technical Service ZTE in Malaysia. Dr. Tiong received his Bachelor of Science from University of Malaya and the LLB from University of London. He later completed his MBA and PhD in Accounting in UPM. Dr. Tiong has vast industrial experience in the field of telecommunication engineering. He has been providing consultancy services to various telcos companies around the world in his 20 plus years of career life. Currently, he is attached to ZTE Corporation, ZTE Corporation responsible primarily on technical related services to all ZTE customers in Malaysia. So before I invite Dr. To the floor. So, uh, when I just want to remind all of the audience that if you have any question that you wish to ask Dr. Tiong, you may actually post them in the chat box and I will get Dr. Tiong to answer them during our QA session. We will keep all these questions to, uh, to the QA session. So, Dr. Tiong, uh, the floor is yours now. Uh, okay. Thanks, Dr. Chua, for the kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Diong, and I'm from ZTE Malaysia. I'm happy today to be here uh, to share on uh, this interesting topic about the development of 5G and Industrial Revolution 4.0. Uh, let me share my slide. Okay, uh, okay, this is the topic uh, of our focus today. And let me do some analysis on the topic. Uh, in actual fact, <clears throat> we can identify four main constructs from the topic, namely COVID-19, economy, 5G, and industrial revolution 4.0, or simply I4. So uh, those uh, words that I have uh, underlined, Okay, it is interesting to know why we put these uh, four constructs together to form the focus of today's sharing section. Uh, in the first few slides uh, for this presentation, I will explain the interrelationship between these four elements. I will start with uh, I4, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Um, when we talk about I4, people might be curious to ask, what happened to I1, I2, and I3? Some of them, some of you all might be, might be familiar, but uh, some of them might not know the history. I'm just giving a quick background introduction of a historical aspect on the industrial revolution here. I1 actually started in the UK of, at some 250 years ago. The invention of steam power and water power had greatly improved the efficiency on textile mining and agricultural industrial at the time. 
uh, in I2 with the increasing installation of electricity network and railways, the people started to increase assembly lines in the factories, which brought to mass production of commercial goods. And when come to I3, I think most of you are familiar with I3, which is called digital revolution. Also, I3 is happened at started at about 1970 when the computer is invented, uh, common use. I3 is all about computing, automobile, auto automation, and uh, communication technologies. I4 is an extension of I3, where different ecosystems are established. This ecosystem are heavily reliable on large scale net machine to machine, M to M communication and Internet of Things, IoT. The ecosystem drive by, are driven by four important technologies, namely uh, intellig intelligent connectivity, AI and automation, big data analytics, and cloud technology. The development of I4 is ongoing even before COVID-19. However, the outbreak of the pandemic has changed the world in an unprecedented way. Many of us are forced to stay at home due to the lockdown. One major consequence is more businesses have shifted to digital or automation. For example, if your workers are stuck in the uh, in their homelands in Bangladesh or Myanmar, what are you going to do with your production lines in the factory? You can't let them either while you are still having, you still have to fulfill ordering commitment, right? In this case, even unwillingly, you have to invest to automate your production lines. To put on another example, while you and your kids are, look, uh, are locked down at home, you need to attend endless online live conference and your kids are attending their online classes. Out of a sudden, your kids come to you with crying faces that his class is hoarded or he couldn't hear what uh, his teacher said because of slow internet. And you realize that you, your conference with your customer are disconnected too due to the network issue or bandwidth uh, uh, slow connection. So this will drive you crazy, I guarantee, and this happened to me. With all, the, with all these challenges and new requirements, if there is no solution for your automation or your bandwidth demands, your business and even your life will be jeopardized. And when thousands of households suffer like you do in Malaysia, the national economy is going to be impacted also. So therefore, uh, the pandemic has forced the digital transformation to be accelerated. Hence, 5G comes into the pictures because 5G is part of the prerequisites for I4, as what I mentioned just now. Based on the explanation, I hope you grasp the interrelationship between uh, COVID 19 economy, 5G, and uh, I4. In the, in, in the subsequent slides, I will focus mainly on the intelligent connectivities. Uh, this slide, okay, uh, this slide shows some major industrial application and their corresponding uh, network requirement. So we have uh, this major, uh, this main application like for example internet software vehicles remote control uh, augmented uh, reality virtual reality intelligent manufacturing intelligent power supply and home entertainment so if you look at all these applications and if you look at uh, the table on the right so every every services has different network requirement uh, like for example, when we come to the 8K, 8K video streaming, so the minimum requirement for the bandwidth is 50 Mbps. And when you come to the HD cloud games, 
the requirement is even higher, 100 max Mbps. So uh, just for your information, the current 4G network in a cell, it can, it can support up to 100, about 200 uh, Mbps. So uh, that means uh, for the current network is way below the requirement of this uh, HD uh, crop gains. If, uh, of course, if one person is doing the activity at, a, at, at one time, then I think probably LTE network still can support. If let's say five or 10 uh, user is, are connected to the network to perform HD crop in the cells, then uh, the sales capacity will be an issue. So uh, for the video streaming, actually the, the delay requirement is not that stringent. But when it comes to this uh, V2S, V2S stands for uh, vehicle for vehicle to everything. So you can see the bandwidth requirements is high, 100 megs Mbps. And the delay requirement is very stringent also. We need uh, we have five and, uh, milliseconds. And of course, the access requirement is high also because you can see there's so many cars uh, on the road. So uh, if all of them need to be connected, then uh, the access uh, number requirement is high too. Uh, another example is the intelligent manufacturing. Uh, in fact, for this manufacturing, the bandwidth requirement actually is not so high, it's quite low. However, in order for the, for the system to make quick decision, the delay requirement actually is high. And the access number requirement also is high. So if you look at this, uh, the conclusion is different services has different network requirement. Unfortunately, our current technology are not able to support these services. So uh, uh, let's say, let's look at the Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi. So the problem is with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is, uh, yeah, they have a, a very small coverage and they can't connect to too many devices at the same time and the performance is not stable. And again, there is security concern too for, wi for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So this does not support uh, our uh, current requirement, uh, no, our future requirement for the I I4. And if you look at the current uh, LTE or 4G network, the bandwidth and the connection are limited. And it cannot support high real-time requirement too. So this is the problem with the uh, current uh, cellular network. Um, However, the invention of 5G technology is aimed to address these challenges. 5G has high bandwidth, uh, which can go up to 8, KB, 8 Gbps. So this is the trial just announced a few days ago. Uh, in, uh, they are trying this in, the, in a commercial network in Finland. So 5G can also support a high number of connectivities up to a million uh, in a single site. So it can support ultra low latency communication tools. So this is important for the autonomous vehicles, uh, the smart grid uh, power, all those uh, kind of the uh, latency or the real time sensitive uh, applications. So therefore, when you look at this slide, okay, uh, it, is, it is worth to remember three key advantage of uh, 5G networks. So uh, we have uh, this uh, EMBB, uh, which is a uh, uh, high bandwidth of the 5G. And uh, we have uh, EMTC, a uh, massive uh, connection. So uh, massive uh, terminal connection and communication. And uh, the ultra low, latency, ultra reliable and low latency communication. Okay, this slide shows how the 5G ecosystem is formed based on the 5G technologies. 5G technologies consist of uh, AI, crop, MEC, end-to-end uh, -end slicing, and uh, big data. So uh, 
I maybe I just uh, explain a bit on the end to end slicing. Uh, just now uh, we talked about different services has different requirement of the network. So end to end slicing actually uh, uh, play a play a very important role on this. So uh, end to end slicing can allocate uh, a certain resources for different kind of the services, not like the current network. Uh, you you the current LTE network we can use. Uh, we can only uh, uh, there's no there's no slicing, so we can only whatever application that you are using is right on the same network. So uh. So this technology actually is uh, uh, able to support the industrial need of different use cases uh, uh, at the right hand side. Okay, in the following few slides, I will share on the. Uh, I will quickly walk through some uh, common industrial use cases. Okay, uh, I put out uh, five. Uh, uh, main industrial application categories, uh, manufacturing, electricity or power, video, uh, healthcare, and uh, transportation. First, when we go to manufacturing, so uh, maybe we just uh, look at the uh, data collection part. Okay, the pain point of uh, current, current manufacturing factories uh, is the cable deployment is inconvenience and makes more time and manpower, especially for the transformation transformation uh, from the old uh, workshop. So, however, data collection is the first step of intelligent factory. So, wireless provides the greatest convenience. So, it can provide uh, the collect the data. So, uh, you might be asking, why not we just use the Wi-Fi or uh, whatever other technology to cheaper technology to to collect the data, uh, uh, bear in mind that uh, uh, Wi-Fi and other technology has the connectivity uh, uh, limitation. So, uh, for example, a home Wi-Fi maybe a modern uh, wireless router can support up to hundred devices. So, if you have uh, devices more than that, or maybe you have ten of thousands of devices uh, in the in the factory or in the manufacturing plant. And then uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or all those technology are not able to support. Uh, another thing is the industrial variable. Okay, uh, normally high skill are required for the field workers, and the wearable device require high mobility and bandwidth, such as uh, AR and VR. So uh, 5G can reduce the requirements of the workers and improve operation efficiency. Uh, part of the digitization of the factories. Okay, uh, we turn to electricity applications. Uh, maybe I just read, maybe, maybe I just go through this uh, intelligent petrol inspection. So uh, uh, the traditional way of inspection is on manpower with limited data acquisition, manual recording, complicated and difficulty, uh, difficult environment. So this is the challenges. So uh, even though we have some robots and drone can be deployed now, but uh, it couldn't send back the uh, uh, data. So you will need to bring down the drone, then only uh, or bring back the robot to your lab, then only you can retrieve the data from the from the from the machine. However, with a five G technology, so uh, we can improve the inspection efficiency efficiency by uh, reduce the uh, work intensity. So uh, again, when come to the data acquisition, data acquisition. So uh, I think this is what the uh, Tanaga is doing now. So they put the uh, they replace uh, gradually the power meter uh, in our house. So uh, so in the future, there's nobody there's uh, 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 there's, they don't need to send the technician to record all those um, uh, power reading from your house. So this is the um, this is the uh, application that uh, can be transmitted through 5G because 5G can uh, support uh, mass uh, connectivity. 
Okay, then we talk about uh, video. Uh, video actually is one of the key uh, uh, application. Uh, video require very huge bandwidth if you are doing the uh, um, high def transmission. So, uh, for example, the ultra high definition security uh, camera. So you will need to transmit the, 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 the image back to the to the uh, data center or server. So you require high bandwidth. So this is the thing that uh, uh, 5G can uh, support. OK, then we turn to the 5G healthcare scenarios. OK, I think this is a hot topic. And uh, I think we have uh, ZTE Malaysia has done some uh, a demonstration. Uh, a few months ago in uh, Langkawi and in uh, 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 Sumaiburo Hospital also. So uh, this is basically to demonstrate okay, how 5G network can help on to improve the quality of the medical and health uh, industry. So uh, like for example, uh, you can have instant uh, improved teamwork and you have a remote medical examination, the pain point, the pain point now for the remote for the medical examination is uh, some medical staff working in community or in very mobile uh, uh, <clears throat> remove area so it is difficult to get the specialist uh, expertise to be sent to uh, the area so um, by deploying uh, 5, 5g and uh, utilize uh, 5g bandwidth and <clears throat> and uh, it's short uh, it's a high high real-time uh, capability, so it can provide remote medical support for medical site working in the community and in mobile situation. Uh, again, uh, another example is the expert support for first-line team. Normally, uh, when the ambulance uh, go out to pick up the uh, patient, so uh, uh, the ambulance only, only that's only they, most likely they will need some paramedic uh, uh, personnel to uh, to follow the ambulance for the first aid. Um, so with this 5G, then uh, uh, this paramedic can do more thing when uh, uh, they pick up the, the uh, emergency patient. Okay, uh, again, another, another advantage is on the remote return visit. So we can reduce the return uh, remote, we can reduce the return visit, physical return visits uh, uh, for the patient. <coughs> okay, uh, then we come to the last one, the transportation. Okay, uh, I think this is going to be a hot topic in next five to 10 years. So we projected that there are going to be million uh, uh, automatic pilot piloted vehicles or semi uh, autonomous vehicle is going to be put on the road uh, in next five to ten years time. So, <coughs> so five G play a very critical role in this aspect uh, because we uh, because five uh, G provide a uh, wide coverage and uh, very instant communication for the for the vehicle and the uh, and the uh, server. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> like for example. Uh, we have this uh, smart public trans uh, traffic, so you can you can you can look at this bus. It's equipped by equipped with so many cameras and uh, <coughs> an intelligent terminal. So all these camera, when you need them to transmit the image back to the uh, data center or your server room instantly, uh, a huge bandwidth is required. Uh, this is not able to be supported by uh, current uh, LTE network. And of course, uh, another top topic is on the autonomous driving. Uh, so this is even more critical uh, uh, for the for, uh, uh, requirement of a 5G network. So this one actually, <clears throat> it's not only require high bandwidth, it require uh, ultra low latency also. OK, uh, so. Uh, Actually, that's all for my today's presentation. Uh, before I end my sharing, I would like to highlight one major 
concern or challenge when we implementing all these wonderful technologies of 5G and i4. Uh, the concern is millions of current jobs will be replaced by increasing utilization of AI and robots. So there will be new jobs. However, there will be new jobs created along the way with the technology development. Uh, the question is how higher education institutions such as MMU are able to transform our own, our younger generation into IR 4.0 enabled workforce. Okay, so this is going to be a main uh, uh, question and requirement from the industry. For this, I think Dr. Lin is able to give us on uh, an answer later. Uh, here I end my sharing for today. Uh, uh, thank you. I pass the floor back to Dr. Chua. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Deong, for, for the uh, sharing on 5G. So I believe a lot of people, they're expecting on uh, when Malaysia can get this thing. And uh, I think it's not only for the commercial user and also for uh, the industry, okay? So uh, we are a bit running out of time, so without wasting much more time, uh, let me uh, bring the next speaker uh, uh, here. Uh, so we have our next speaker for today's webinar, Ms. Lu Guan Qi. So uh, Ms. Lu is the Senior Director and the Head of Department of Factory Integration in Infineon Malacca. She is responsible for strategy, governance and innovation for factory uh, integration, integration organization globally. She was one of the core team members in Infineon BEI 4.0 Roadmap Program and has been actively driving solution implementation into the BE factories. Her heavy involvement in various Infineon global core projects has put her as one of the pioneers for I 4.0 in Malacca. Guan Qi graduated from uh, USM with bachelor degrees honors in computer science. So uh, as a reminder, again, if you have any question, feel free to post it uh, on the chat box in the uh, Facebook live stream. So uh, without wasting much more time, uh, let's welcome Ms. Lu. Okay, a uh, very good morning to all of you. A good day if uh, some of you are in a different time zone with us. Um, thank you for inviting me as one of the speakers to this uh, event today. Uh, Infineon Technologies has been in a very good uh, partnerships and uh, collaborations with MMU thus far. I think by next year, we are clocking maybe uh, the 10 years uh, collaboration since we started. Yeah, so um, today what I'm going to share with you is uh, the journey. A brief one, of course, with the 15 minutes time allocations, I can't work through with you all the details, but I will just pick some of the key essence how we embark on the uh, industrial 4.0 journey and with some examples that are relevant to the Monaco factory. So I'm now sharing my slides and I hope there is good to we'll proceed. Okay, so um, Dr. Deong has started with the introduction very, very well uh, with regards to how the industry has revolved uh, since the industrial uh, revolution one two and three and we are now at the revolution four so basically in a nutshell if i were to describe to you what is industrial 4.0 is basically talking about connectivity yeah it is the internet of things in productions and it connects the whole entire value change so in other words that you may uh, sometimes get familiar or has heard about this word cyber physical system so it, it is like now you're having a, a physical productions, but you are able to manage, you are able to organize it digitally or virtually in other words. It's just like how the web webinar is conducted today. Yeah, everyone uh, do not need to now be physically together, but yet we are able to get the job done. Yeah, so this is also uh, happening in the uh, manufacturing industry, especially in the production floor where in the past, it's always been perceived as very rigid. Yeah, you need people to be there because you have your physical equipment, your physical uh, material that you need to process. But with uh, I four revolutions, this is going to be changed. Yeah, where in the future we can operate uh, your operations in any or uh, anywhere at any time. 
And this, in our opinion, actually uh, connected productions is no longer an option. It's not to say that whether you want to do or you don't want to do, but in our opinion, that it is a must if you want to stay uh, competitive yeah, in the industry and always to be also the uh, leaders in the uh, industry. So that's where uh, you can see here that uh, Infineon as a company, we carry the vision as we are the link between the real and the digital world. So what does it mean is actually, or uh, as some of you may know, Infineon is actually a uh, semiconductor uh, manufacturer. But at the same time, we are also partnering with a lot of uh, companies uh, in also uh, providing solution. It is not only from product as the uh, semicon chips, yeah, but at the same time also a solution. So we see here that actually uh, the industrial 4.0 uh, evolutions has also shaped us or changed uh, that our business strategy. At the same time, we're also seeing that we have to adapt ourselves, our business, how we do. Yeah, and in Infinum corporates, we call this as a digitalization. Digitalization's uh, journey is relevant in the aspect of all our business. Where you can see from the slides here, we are talking about new business model and customer experience. Yeah, where you can see here that there are many uh, new approach, new way of uh, engaging customer, getting the uh, customer uh, interactions more uh, 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 fruitfully, and so on. And we are also looking into how to digitalize of our product and services. Yeah. And the other dimensions, not forgetting as well, the digitalizations and integration of the whole value chain means from the orders up to uh, delivery to the customer. And this is where uh, the I4 aspect is covering. And also while looking into these three core business dimensions, not to forget as well, we keep digitalizing or looking into our process and method means that we have to change as well. Probably in the former time, we are used to a certain way of doing, but under this digitalization wave, we have to change ourselves. We have to adapt to the new way. It's just like how today everyone is adapting to this um, pandemic situations. It has changed a lot our lifestyle. Yeah, in the former time, probably those that we came from, uh, IR3, uh, yeah, when the uh, 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 this uh, worldwide web uh, uh, generations or we are still I mean at the time was already very happy with uh, handphone having a mobile phone but nowadays people are talking about smart smartphone uh, we talk about car people now talk about smart car electronic car then talk about home people talk about smart home so these are all the uh, things that we have to also adjust ourselves to go together with this uh, transformation and for today's topics, ICO and Monaco, we are basically focusing on how then we tap into this digitalization's journey uh, to uh, digitalize our manufacturing, supply chain, and also technology development. So um, here I show you a summary of how we do this uh, Industrial 4.0 uh, for our backend factories. So for those you are familiar with uh, Semicon, basically we differentiate uh, our manufacturing plant into uh, fabs, yeah, front end, and then back end processes. So as Malacca, uh, we are uh, uh, we are responsible for the assembly and test. So uh, we are actually a back end uh, factory. So here the example that I put in are all more relevant to back end uh, factories. So overall, there is a big picture to do industrial 4.0. Yeah, where we look into some few of our actions or let's say focus area. As you know, there are many areas that you could um, implement, implement automation, implement uh, digitalizations and so on. But on the other hand, we have to also consider why we do it. Yeah, uh, we got to have a purpose. Yeah, and always the purpose has to be something that we see it is helping the organizations. And as we are also in such a business, uh, always the ROI is one of the considering uh, consideration as well that we have to make sure that the investment that we put in, in the end, it will also bring us a benefits or a results yeah, in the overall strategic uh, directions of the company. So here we have four key uh, focus areas or dimensions to look into when we talk about I4 in the factories. So first, we were talking about integrating the production flow. So you just visualize that, yeah, the production floor are full with the equipments, but one day there's no one, there's no human being that 
needs to be stationed at the shop floor. How we do it? We basically digitalize the productions and manufacturing system, meaning to say that the machines know what to do next. The material will flow into the line by itself. Where today in uh, quite some of our production line, we are still quite labor intensive. Where the human will decide. Yeah, example, if now these machines has to load the uh, material, then they will bring the material, prepare the material, and so on. But in the future. We are seeing that this could come in the situations where the, the shop floor will be able to run with probably minimal or even zero human interactions. Yeah, this uh, physical uh, presence will no longer be a, a crucial uh, aspect of running production. Then we have also uh, the area, a focus area of looking into automated deviation detection, predictions, and decisions. Here we are talking about collecting the data. Collecting as in production flow, we generate a lot of data from the machines, from the uh, performance of your materials and so on. This information, this data are collected. After collections, then the next question would be what to do with this data. So this is where the data is evaluated. Yeah, Data is collected first real time. The moment data is generated, you will tap, in, tap this data and then process it. Process it and evaluate the data and then make necessary response yeah to manage the line okay if you see something is uh out of control or probably your machine is now having too many uh, alarms then you probably has the decisions of stopping the machines instead of producing continuing uh producing where it may cause a further uh, damage to the whole uh, production flow so this is what we call automated division detection prediction and also decisions yeah and the other area we are looking into would be also this highly effective cell managed digital work life. So uh, as nowadays uh, we are also adapting yeah, from uh, getting more and more now a mobile device used to uh, have a lot of these uh, uh, technologies that enable uh, to be more mobile. Uh, you can get the things done anywhere, anytime and this we are also looking into the shop flow. How do we manage shop flow that uh, we do not need to be physically present? So this is, uh, we term it as digital work life. So uh, here is uh, situations like, uh, if you to know what is happening at the production floor, you probably do not need to now go into uh, the shop floor to witness what is happening, but rather you are able to get this information um, handy and display and even process aggregated to the meaningful information for you to know what is happening. And all this solution is actually today uh, enabled also on the mobile device and also uh, from the laptops, yeah, that for, for the engineers, for the managers that are responsible for the line, they can just simply log into the system and they are able to know already what has happening and with a lot of drill down function as well. If I'm seeing that, okay, today I'm not meeting my delivery, I just click, then I will see, okay, which particular product that I failed to deliver. I click further, then I will know maybe this is caused by a material issue. Maybe this is caused by um, unplanned uh, equipment downtime. I click further, what has happened to this machine? I click further, probably I will get the list of uh, errors that generated by machines. I click further, I probably will see when this happened, who is uh, who has attended to it, and what uh, is the actions taken, and so on. So this, we call it self-managed digital work life. Okay, and the last part is uh, more on the automations, yeah, and a lot of people actually having uh, uh, somehow a perception that when we talk about I4 uh, in manufacturing, the first idea come by or the first impression come by would be automation. And this is true, yeah, because this automation is something that you can see. Whereas for the rest one, uh, how we do it, that like digitalized productions, uh, uh, a manufacturing system, uh, getting the data, do the data analysis for uh, real-time uh, reactions, as well as also digital work life, probably it's not so visible yeah, from surface. But automation is something that you can see and you can be lit and you can get a better glimpse of what is really I4 about. So in automation, basically, you can see uh, this is a real picture of a HEV moving in the line and this is the machines, a vehicle that transporting the material. yeah. And besides this uh, HEV, for example, we have also like a packing line where we used to use uh, operator to fold the box to pack the material before we ship out. But these are all automated with a uh, fully automated line where the box folding, the label pasting, and even 
uh, tie it into a bundle. These are all done uh, by uh, machines, automated machines. So we also look into this and heavily invest invest into this area of uh, automating those uh, actions that could be done. Yeah, but to achieve this state of uh, industrial 4.0, uh, basically we also see that we need some uh, competencies or uh, the enablers. So competency is one of the key area where uh, we got to make sure that our people are competent enough because they got to maintain, they got to know how to run the line as compared to in the past. We need to connect all the equipment together. Why? Because we are saying that here is talking about connectivity, Internet of Things. At the same time, standardization also very important. Of course, you can still implement some of the projects without standardization, but this will cost you more probably because you have to now cater your solution just because your line are not standardized. You don't have a standard protocol of communicating from one application to the other or from one machine to the other. So standardization will help to ease a lot uh, when you're talking about implementation. So one solution fit all. Okay, and here I just want to show you uh, the uh, one of the project showcase, yeah, and this is currently productive running already in the Malacca factory. Um, the Malaysian PM has visited us on uh, September, and he was he was toured uh, to this room. We call it control tower, where you can see here that we have all this production indicator shown on the big screen to tell you what is happening at your line. And he himself was very impressed with the uh, project implementation in Malacca, and it was officially also published or released by the state government in their YouTube channel. So if you're interested, you can search for this video to look for uh, further details. Yeah. So with that, uh, I'm done with my sharing today. As I said, it will be a very brief one uh, to give you a glimpse of what we are doing. And thank you for your attention. And I now hand over to... Uh, Okay, thank you, Miss Lu, uh, for for the very uh, great sharing, uh, so that we we actually can have a, a quick view on uh, how actually Infineon implement this uh, IL four point zero in your Malacca uh, brand in your, in your Malacca plant. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned by Miss Lu. Uh, uh the industry eventually needs quite a lot of uh, uh competency uh workers that uh that uh actually would be part of, part, part of the workforce to uh drive uh, this transformation so uh next uh let's let me invite uh, uh dr li mengsong from higher education institute uh, to share about his talk on uh, how actually the higher in, higher education institute can produce uh, such a competence lay, uh, workers that is needed by the industry. So uh, so let me have a very quick fast introduction to Dr. Ling Wenxiang. So Dr. Lim is now the deputy director of research management center in multimedia university. At the same time, he is also uh, the associate professor of faculty of engineering uh, and technology. MMU Malacca. So Dr. Lim received his Bachelor of Engineering first class honor degree in electrical engineering from uh, UTM in 1999. He got his uh, uh, master degree by research, uh, master in engineering uh, science and PhD in engineering focusing on signal processing for wireless communications from MMU in 2002 and 2008 respectively. So he is currently an uh, associate professor of Faculty of Engineering and Technology, MMU Malacca. His current research interests are in the areas of signal processing and communication system. So, uh, so if you have any question that you want to pose, uh, you, you want to ask Dr. Lim about uh, what, what he's going to share later on, feel free to pose your question in the chat box in the Facebook Live. So uh, Dr. Lim, uh, uh, looking forward for your sharing. Okay, uh, thanks Dr. Chua for the kind introduction. Uh, a very good morning to everyone here. Uh, I'm Lim from MMU. Uh, so for my part of the sharing, I, I will talk more from the perspective of the higher education industry, right? So let me share my slide.
Okay, so uh, specifically, I will share with you our view and experience on how the higher education institution can play a role in uh, upscaling and rescaling of our workforce, uh, which I think is a very important key to economic recovery in the post COVID-19 era. So what we can see so far from the COVID-19 pandemic is that on one hand, uh, it has caused a, a biggest unemployment crisis in the modern era. Okay, many people are laid off and lost their job because of the pandemic. And on the other hand, we also see that uh, how crucial is our digital and telecommunication infrastructure is for our work and daily life. So we, we can't live now, we can't work without uh, the online services, online technologies. Okay. We are relying on online shopping, online, online banking for our daily life. So the factory are relying on the automation to function properly. So we can see that uh, the, uh, the need for the skilled workforce is uh, very critical here uh, in terms of uh, digital competency okay, for building and maintaining and facilitating this uh, digital transformation okay, to help us in this uh, crisis time. So um, the question is how, how we as a higher education institution can play a role here to help the industry and also help our community in addressing the employment issue, for example, and also to further develop and uh, uh, help in the adoption of these uh, digital technologies. Okay. And um, so you can see that uh, some recent study has shown that uh, the, the, because of the digital transformation, uh, people are getting concerned. And in fact, a uh, study has shown that uh, a big portion of our uh, workforce globally uh, we have to change their job or acquire new skill by 2030 okay, because of the trend of uh, moving into more automation and also the artificial intelligence, right? So this happened even before the COVID-19, okay? so this, this kind of trend. But uh, the COVID-19 actually accelerate this transformation, this change, and uh, a local study in Malaysia shown that Okay, about 91%, okay, that, that is a nine out of 10 person that get interviewed here, say that they, they, they think they need to be upskilled or reskilled in the next 12 months in order to stay in their job or change to a new job. Okay? And uh, so, so this is uh, very real now, uh, the need for upskilling and reskilling of our workforce. Okay, so the higher education institution has to be ready. It has to be transformed also to uh, meet this kind of demand. So how to stay relevant okay, in tomorrow's world? Uh, so because of my background, I will, I will share uh, more on the uh, engineering uh, domain. Okay? So for the uh, students, Okay, those are SPM, A-level, STPM or diploma levels. So if you are still deciding on uh, which path okay, you should move into, so uh, our, our suggestion is we encourage you to consider uh, taking up a degree in the electronics engineering, okay? uh, specifically electronics uh, majoring in telecommunication. Because you can see that the, the growth in this industry is still uh, very uh, uh, tremendously uh, good. Okay? So it is a good time for you to consider uh, taking up a career in this uh, area. Okay? Uh, we need talents, a lot of talents in this area to help us to develop and uh, to, to help uh, the community to adopt, okay? to help the community to have this kind of technology. Uh, uh, for example, the uh, 5G, IR 4.0, IoT, AI, smart system. Uh, so these are the, the, the area uh, which is growing very rapidly. Okay. And you have a very good uh, career prospect uh, in this area. Uh, for those um, 
degree holder and working engineers, you may want to can consider taking a postgraduate degree by research, okay, for example, the master and PhD degree, uh, because mainly because critical thinking and uh, research skills are uh, very important skills, okay, which will help you to perform and also to excel in your in your career. Okay. So the a postgraduate degree is actually a training, uh, right, to uh, to uh, build up your research and critical thinking skills. So uh, apart from that, uh, those who are working people may also want to consider industrial certification courses okay, to uh, improve yourself during this uh, pandemic time. Okay. Uh, and another relatively new model is what we call micro credentials. So this is uh, similar to uh, short courses okay, offered by a university in, normally in an online mood, okay, where the working people can take it at their uh, own uh, convenience. And uh, when they have accumulated sufficient number of these micro credentials or, or credits, they may go to the university and uh, get a degree. Okay? For example, a bachelor or master or PhD degree after they have a sufficient number of these micro credentials recognized by the uh, university and also MPA. So this is a, a new model, which I think uh, will be uh, very important in the future okay, for uh, lifelong learning. So uh, I hope I can share a bit more with you late, later or uh, in the future uh, about this. Uh, so for those uh, considering a postgraduate study, uh, let me quickly introduce uh, to you our research center, uh, Center for Sustainable Communication and IoT. So. This is a research center which grew from a small research group established in 2011. Uh, now uh, I'm the chairperson of this research center. So we have a team of members working on uh, different areas okay, related to advanced communication system and also IoT. Uh, and this slide shows some of the projects we have done okay, uh, related to 5G, for example. Uh, at once wireless communication system, uh, system design, uh, electromagnetic uh, wave modeling okay, and characterization, radio propagation, uh, IoT projects, energy harvesting for wireless sensor, okay, connected drones, for example. So there are many more. So if uh, you are interested to find out more, please feel free to contact us and we will discuss further okay, with, uh, on this thing. Okay. And uh, next, I'm going to share with you uh, our experience and also our strategy, okay? a bit of experience uh, from MMU on how we develop our program so that it, it is uh, industry relevant, okay? which I think is very important these days okay? uh, uh, because of the trend okay? and uh, also because we want to empower our students. Okay? To, to be uh, uh, useful uh, workers okay, uh, for the industry. So we have many, our strategy is our strategy is very simple actually. We work together, we work very closely with the industry. And uh, from the relationship, also the, the understanding we build up uh, with the industry, we, we improve on our program and, and try to bridge a gap, gap between uh, the theory we teach to the student and also the practical hands-on uh, required by the industry. Uh, but it is, it is it's easy to say, but it's very difficult to execute, actually. Uh, what I am going to share with you is, are just two examples of our collaboration with Infineon and also with ZTE, uh, which I think is, are the most remarkable one. Okay, first, uh, our collaboration with Infineon uh, actually goes back to 2011. Okay. So uh, every year we do a series of activities okay, in uh, the campus together with uh, Infineon. For example, we have competition talks, uh, industrial link projects, <coughs> and so on, uh, where we get <coughs> sorry, where we get the exposure. Uh, industry exposure for our students and we bring the industry expert uh, to 
share with our students their experience. And <clears throat> the highlight of the activity is the creation of the industry link subject called semiconductor packaging and test. And then this uh, subject is very special. It is uh, done by both the industry's expert and our lecturers. Uh, and I will share a bit more on you to uh, review on this thing. So here we, I have some photos about the activities we have uh, throughout the years with Infineon. So you can see uh, there's a lot of interaction we created for the student uh, with the industry uh, in the form of a competition factory visit, okay? a presentation from the student to the industry expert to get their feedback, for example. Uh, the event is actually called Infineon Week. Okay? And uh, the latest one we have is in 2019. And this year, because of the pandemic, we are not able to do uh, the event. So I, I think we'll be able to do it again in the coming year. Uh, for the curriculum embedment program, uh, this is uh, something very special we do with the industry. Uh, we create some new subject uh, where we get the industry expert to be the lecturer. Okay? And also we have the lab session conducted in the Infineon manufacturing plant okay, so that the student get a real uh, practical hands-on experience okay, uh, what they will uh, really do in the industry later. So uh, this is very important because we have seen out of these uh, kind of activities, uh, our student has gained a lot of advantage in terms of their employability rate. Okay, and uh, so this is a uh, uh, our experience to share with you. For our collaboration with ZTE, uh, this is something very unique, I would say. Uh, it all started in 2016, where we have a partner to build out a training lab. Okay. Uh, the one we call ZTE MMU Training Center. And the uh, lab is very impressive. It actually contains all the latest uh, mobile technology equipment, okay. industry grade equipment, uh, for example, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. <clears throat> so you can see on this slide, uh, the lab contains equipment from the radio base station part all the way to the core network servers. Okay. So from this lab, we can actually create uh, a working network for 5G, uh, 4G system. Okay. So we have planned to upgrade this to 5G now. So soon the student will get to experience the 5G uh, network equipment. So we have a series of training courses we have conducted throughout the years. And these are the list of courses uh, that we are capable of conducting, okay. very industry related courses. We also have talks where the industry experts share their knowledge and experience with our students and staff. And uh, the highlight of the collaboration is the creation of a new subject called Radio Network Planning Towards 5G. And this subject is first offered uh, recently uh, to our students on, on an online um, mood okay, due to the pandemic. So we have successfully completed the first round of the subject. And uh, for the plan now, we are upgrading our lab to 5G. And soon we will conduct a series of 5G training to our staff, students. And uh, that is our experience on uh, working together with the industry to make our program uh, more industry relevant. So I hope that that is uh, something useful for you. And uh, with that, I will end my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, back to you, Dr. Chua. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lim. So we have quite, uh, we, ha we have some questions posted uh, on the Facebook uh, page for this live stream. So I think uh, we read out of time. So uh, never mind, we will still try our best to to, I will still try, try my best to bring the question to, to
to the speakers. So let's say uh, we have one question for each of the speakers. So let's start with uh, Miss Lu. So Miss Lu, there is a one question that uh, I think probably the best person, uh, to address this with you. So due to co due to post COVID nineteen, how to motivate the manufacturers to provide or rethink? on IR 4.0 adoption in a more cost-effective manner, especially in production or supply chain area. So what is your opinion? Um, I think here uh, many manufacturers have experienced that uh, now uh, under the current uh, pandemic situations, uh, there are quite some, uh, I would say, uh, changes that they have to adopt yeah, in order for them to still be able to uh, survive or sustain in the industry and i also understand uh, why this question uh, uh, the perspective of this question is in um, when you want to embark on such a journey it's basically you talk about resources resources here is talking about uh, your organization whether you have such a competency whether you have such a setup um, capability to run through this in the organization and the other part of it would be then uh, money do you have such a, a budget to do with this? So yeah, I see that it is actually uh, the the industry or the company itself probably you will have a lot of challenges if you to um, start this journey yourself. Uh, what I see here is that basically this uh, other area we have to focus on first is that to get the workforce for the future ready. If you are really wanted to embark on the industrial ball, transforming your uh, operations into, uh, 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 let's say, uh, for future or better uh, efficiency, you've got to make sure that you already design the workforce for future. You don't have to wait until uh, when you need that, only you start to look for the talents or you start to look for um, who can do it for you. And for this, I think the Higher Educational Institute could play a role here of how to now uh, supply such a talents into the market so that uh, for each and every of the industry they can tap into this uh, i would say already made talents into an organization and that would help to speed up to accelerate so so the whole implementation the other part is that the whole uh, ecosystem because uh, as a as an organization you probably can't do much yourself but you need a lot of your supplier your vendor and here i think uh, how can we uh, corroborate more with the uh, SME, with the uh, suppliers, with the vendor uh, to enable and to also deliver some of the uh, new solutions yeah, uh, to speed up the implementation. And of course, the other aspect I'm seeing here is that where I think uh, we as an uh, uh, industry player, we should also have a very let's say, uh, active dialogue with our government. I think government has to play a part here also to help the rest. Yeah? of uh, probably improving the infrastructure in the company, uh, giving also uh, better supports yeah, from funding uh, incentive perspective to help uh, the rest to also uh, accelerate into this I4 uh, transformation. That's my view. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ms. Lu. So uh, the next question, uh, I think Dr. Tiong would be the suitable person to answer this. So the questions, uh, the question goes like this. Uh, in a recent econ economic report by World Bank on BFM, most telecom providers have yet to recover its 4G investments, restricting their appetite to invest in 5G infra infrastructure. What angle of humanization of innovation can we leverage upon to kill two birds with one stone and make 5G commercially available to us? Uh, <coughs> this is a good question. Uh, I think profit, profitability is always a key concern for commercial for a commercial telco. So, uh, and the revenue and profitability are driven by the market demands. Like what I mentioned just now, uh, industrial are forced to expedite their automation uh, or AI approach, which um, rely heavily on the intelligent connectivity that I mentioned, which is um, a 5G network. So this creates the demand for 5G network actually. When the telco operator smell bloods, they will come. Okay, so how to uh, how to let them how to uh, uh, let them uh, see the prospect? Okay, so then we come to a lot of uh, uh, 
use cases innovation that uh, uh, we mentioned actually uh, just now. Uh, so uh, again, this is market driven. So on the other hand, uh, 5G deployment in the first few years of the rollout, uh, most of the telco would not go into blanket coverage like uh, 3G and uh, LTE. Even LTE actually, they started with uh, uh, some prioritized area. Okay. Um, if you go for the blanket coverage, then uh, it will involve a uh, huge initial startup investment. So uh, I agree with you that uh, most of the telco might not want to go into this, but again, they will still deploy. Uh, they will likely deploy the 5G coverage for the first few years based on the market needs on the use cases. So what we need to do is to create as to innovate or to create as many as use cases that uh, uh, entice uh, the operator to build the network for us. Uh, I hope I answer your question. All right, thanks, Dr. Tiong. So let's have the last question for today. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, direct the question to Dr. Lim. So the question sounds like this. With the advancement of automation, it will surely bring benefits to heavy industries. For example, computer manufacturing. However, in the views of small, medium industries, rubber plantation and oil palm factories, they would have less privilege to experience and obtain the new technologies to be implemented in their specific work line. Uh, therefore, what can be done to bridge this privilege gap that would happen if industries are to endeavor in a fully smart working environment. So what is our opinion, Dr. Lim? Uh, thanks for the question. The issue of digital divide is a very uh, important issue that we need to address. Uh, right? So unfair access to the technology is uh, one of the problem. So to help to uh, overcome this problem, that's why we need a lot of talents in different industry. Okay? We need uh, talents uh, in engineering, in uh, IT, uh, to be in the government, to, in, to be in the industry, to influence the policy, okay, to improve infrastructure okay, in the rural area, and also to improve the infrastructure through working in the industry, okay, to contribute to the community. So we, we need a lot of talents here. And it's sad to know that uh, the young people these days uh, shy away from uh, science and technology stream. Okay? So we actually need a lot of talents in the engineering area, in IT, in technology areas okay, to help us in uh, this, uh, overcome this problem. So um, I, I, I encourage all of you to, to contribute in the innovation okay, of the technology to bring down the cost so that we can implement useful kind of uh, technology uh, to help the uh, smart agriculture, for example, uh, smart manufacturing, for example, in the rural area. Uh, in terms of uh, doing research, okay, in terms of uh, working in the telecommunication industry, okay, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, building policy okay, in our government uh, to help us on the bridging this digital divide. So uh, that is uh, my view on this. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So uh, with the answer from Dr. Lim, uh, so uh, we are near to the end of the webinar. We eventually, we already overrun this for four, uh, 14 minutes already. So as a closing remark for this webinar, so I think all of us, the government, the MNC, the SME, and the workforce are important to help to recover our country's economy. So in order to nurture a pool of competent workers required by the industry, so we as the institutes of higher education are working closely with the industries to fine tune our programs, our courses, our syllabus, our subjects, to ensure that they are always up to date to the rapidly changing market needs, especially in the uh, in, in the case that we have now, we have the COVID-19 pandemic nowadays. So if you are interested to be part of us, feel free to visit our website at www.mmu.edu.my or you can just simply Google MMU or MMU Malaysia. I believe the first entries come from come from a search result will be uh, our university. So before I end this webinar, so uh, please give, allow me to, to, to take one or two minutes to thank a lot of people over here. So first, our speakers for today, 
Dr. Tiong from ZTE, Ms. Lu from Infineon, Dr. Lim from MMU for your great and fruitful sharing. I believe a lot of audience, they have uh, learned that, not, not really learned, they have uh, uh, input some of the uh, uh, knowledge or information from your side. Next, to all our audience here for your time in joining us, eventually it's already uh, 75 minutes, sorry for that. And lastly, to the organizer of this webinar, our University Research Program and Collaboration Center, our PCC, our University Postgraduate Enrollment Unit, Faculty of Engineering and Technology, and the technical support team for making this webinar go uh, smoothly. So every one of us, uh, let us stay healthy, stay happy, and very soon we will be wealthy. Okay, so have a nice day and see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.